Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear, and other random stuff. In the first video, I touched on the history of the computer industry in the early 1980s and the origin of PCs and portable PCs. I went over the features and specifications of Hyperion, the world's first portable PC. After testing my Hyperion and finding it wouldn't power up, I disassembled and examined the guts. With some poking around, I discovered the power switch was broken and the power supply was dead and not worth fixing. I also found the CRT monitor would not do anything with power attached. If you want to watch the first video, here is a link to it. It's now a few weeks later. Here's the switch that needs to be replaced. And here's a lot of five replacement switches I was able to order from an eBay seller. They are used pullouts. They were much less money than the $90 a piece that they cost new. But four out of five pieces had one or more defects and wouldn't work. Fortunately, the seller refunded my money and fortunately, one piece does work. Here it is with the original lens installed. The switch had been illuminated by a miniature bi-pin lamp rated at 18 volts, 26 milliamps. I wasn't going to source one of these. It's easier to install an amber LED with a dropping resistor in its place. So that's exactly what I did. I'll dim my workbench light so you can see what it really looks like. Before connecting up the new power supply, I want to see if there are any shorts on this board. The easiest way to do that is to inject a very low voltage, not enough actually to cause any of the gates to start operating, but just enough to see if there is an unusual draw on plus 5 or plus 12. Not much is going to be on minus 12. A volt or a volt and a half on, on the 5 volt rail right there, and I should get virtually no current draw at all. The other side has a similar connector, and I'll inject voltage there too. On the first board, at 1.3 volts I'm drawing 90 milliamps. That's not a short. On the 12 volt rail, same board, I'm drawing nothing. On the second board, at 1.3 volts, I'm drawing 130 milliamps. It's a little high, but that's probably still not a short on the 5 volt rail. And on the 12 volt rail, second board, I'm drawing nothing. I'm going to go forward, assuming that there are no short circuits on the power rails due to bad capacitors. This computer needs plus 12, plus 5, and minus 12. This power supply supplies plus 12, plus 5 with lots of current, and plus 24, which I can't use. This one over here just provides me with 12, which I can hook up as minus 12. Now I suppose I could have got an isolating converter that would take that 24 and turn it to minus 12, but it would have probably been more money and harder to acquire. That stud that held on the frame for the old power supply can hold in the small 12 volt power supply and that 12 volts power supply keeps the other power supply wedged in and it can't go anywhere. Not at all. I will have to collect all the whites and tie them together as common or ground. All the yellows together and they are plus five. Collect all the oranges together and they are plus twelve. The blue one that's minus 12. But first I need to make sure the power supplies are adjusted. There's usually a small potentiometer, in this case right over there where it says VR1, which allows you to trim the voltage to what it should be. This power supply tops out around 11.6 or 11.7 volts, which should do. This one works too, and it was a little bit low. I've trimmed it up to just under 5, like 4.9 volts. And that puts the 12 volt supply around 12.1, and that's fine. 
with TTL it's got to be within 10% so half a volt is fine. The screws in the corner should let me take the bezel off. There are seven screws holding this in place but five of them were present and two of them were missing and yes the end of the switch over here uh, that was sort of crazy glued together and not crazy glued terribly well. Anyway, it's gone. I'm going to clean this up. The plastic has faded. I'm not going to retrobrite it. I guess it's an antique, so it will look like an antique. And of course, I will clean up the knobs as well. Next, I need to turn my attention to the built-in 7-inch CRT monitor. Fortunately, there is a schematic for it. In the first video, I discovered that applying power to the monitor did nothing. Let's trace the path of plus 12 volts to the monitor. 12 volts enters the monitor at pin 7 and goes through a fuse, F1. But I didn't notice a fuse. This device right over here that looks like a resistor is actually a fuse. It's a Pico 2 fuse made by Little Fuse. Here's how to read it. This particular fuse is 1.5 amps fast acting. And it's open. I connected up the power supply to this point, set it to current limiting, and it drew about 0.7 amps at 12 volts. Who knows why this opened? It's possible. The old power supply failed and that caused it to draw too much current and blow. Anyway, this is open. I will have to remove this printed circuit board to get under it to replace that fuse. I'll replace it with a different kind of fuse that will be easier to replace in the future. This is the board that controls the CRT. The CRT unplugs from there and the deflection yoke unplugs from there and the high voltage anode unplugs if the monitor is run for any length of time, you'll need to discharge the CRT here before you can handle it. I did a video you can watch on discharging CRTs. Then the board comes out, and now it's just a matter of getting to that fuse, that little green thing there. This isn't quite as elegant as the Pico fuse, but it's a lot easier to replace. I don't have any 1.5 amp fuses in this size. I do have two. But I also have one. I'll use the 1 amp fuse until I can get some 1.5 amp fuses. You don't supersize your fuses. Now what I can do is apply 12 volts to the monitor and see if it powers up. If I get a heater lighting up or perhaps something on the screen. No characters, just maybe a raster. It's drawing 0.73 amps and not getting anything on the screen. I'm not hearing anything either. There's no question it would not have worked before. There's no guarantee that it works now, but at least there's a chance it will. It's been a long day. I've got the switch installed with a pilot lamp. It's got a dropping resistor, 1200 ohms because it's on the 12 volt supply. So we'll uh, draw 10 milliamps. I've got the two power supplies wired in. With, um, that's plus 5 on the yellow, plus 12 on orange, minus 12 on blue, and, it's really hard to see, um, ground on on this uh, beige or white. The next stage will be to reconnect the printed circuit boards and see what happens. Hopefully I get a beep and some display on the CRT. And of course I expect the disk drive to start spinning waiting for a disk. I think we're ready to give it a test. Here goes. Okay, fan has come on, and guess what? 
memory fault. I can deal with that. There isn't much information on Hyperion's self-test beyond what appears in the maintenance manual, and this is it. While some power on self-tests are very well documented, like IBM's Model 5150, this is not. So I have to make some inferences. I'm going to guess the second four-digit number is a hexadecimal address where the error occurred, and the last two digits encode which bits are faulty. Perhaps the last two digits of the first group is the bank number. I truly have no idea what these could be. Of course, this is only a guess, but it's a starting place. If you have an idea what this message could mean, please leave it in the comments section below. There are 36 DRAM chips and they're all soldered in. Since it's going to be very time consuming to desolder the old one and socket and install a new one, I'd like to get it right the first time. But that will be for another time because I am just wiped after today doing this computer and working on a television which is not cooperating. I hope you enjoyed this video from Mr. Brown's Basement. I hope that you would consider subscribing to my channel for unusual and varied content. I probably won't be able to work on this for a few weeks. I'm anxious to see what it will take to get it to go. <laughs> I've already spent a lot of time on it. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video.